Hello, welcome back to tuning into today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the dead 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us to the 8th of January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SNGFS and ECM ensembles. We want to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSV2 at the end of the video for January itself and I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first. The video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast with also these Jeremy Friday as well please check out all today's videos and content thank you so much everyone for doing that we're going to be live at 6 p.m tonight so i would normally do, be doing a pub run but i'm still recovering from uh, the lurk you know i thought <laughs> be a little bit tired to do uh, a, a late pub run live tonight so we'll leave that off this week it'll come back next friday but i did want to get one last live stream in before the end of the year and tonight's tonight's so at 6 p.m we're going to be uh, going live we shall have a look at the trails there bottle runs we'll do ensembles watch and will include some long range in that as well so it'll be an epic live stream for the final time in 2023 i shall see you at uh, 6 p.m hold up <coughs> i'm so sorry everybody. i shall see you at 6 p.m um for uh, for our last live stream of the year um now shout outs i'm a little bit behind with shout outs so uh, i'm going to say thank you so much for your kindness and general seat and for your donation to celine Celine Doran uh, gave us a donation um, the other day. Uh, thank you so much, Celine, for uh, doing that. Thank you so much on Christmas Eve, I think, that came through. So thank you so much, Celine, and uh, I hope you had a lovely, lovely Christmas. If you'd like to give a donation to Cows Rubbins, you can find a link to our PayPal page in the description with the video. So, um, you know, sign up your PayPal account, you can donate whatever you want to Cows Rubbins, you'll get a shout-out in the videos as well. And thank you so much to Peter... Peter Tarski, who gave a super thanks on the, the Boxing Day video. I think it was a Boxing Day video, anyway. Um, oh, thank you so much. That's actually a Christmas Eve video. Um, no, thank you so much to Peter for your uh, donation as well. That's incredible. Uh, absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you'd like to give a super thanks, you can find the super thanks button underneath the video play here on YouTube or um, behind the three little dots there. And uh, you can uh, give a super thanks. It'll flag up your comment and uh, you'll get a shout out as well so thank you so much to Celine, thank you so much to Peter because I've never wanted to do tomorrow as well so thank you so much to Celine and to Peter for your kindness and generosity, thank you to all of you for your kindness over the past year, um, you are helping to pay for gas, you're helping to pay for me to be able to sit here and do this, uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your kindness, okay hold on again if I... <coughs> All right, here we go. Let's have a look at what's happening in the strategy. So warming is gathering pace. The strategy is warming is gathering pace here over Russia and into Siberia as well. <coughs> The blue colours are the, uh, is the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the Arctic of the North Pole. But uh, stratospheric warming is uh, happening over Russia and Siberia right now. Back to warming is going to strengthen as we approach the new year. So here it comes, pushing in from Russia into Siberia, becoming a major warming of the stratosphere from Russia in towards the North Pole as well. You would look at that and think it's going to reverse the zone of wind. It is only going to be um, a displacement event, but it's not a split of the polar vortex, I don't think. And uh, falling short of a full on reversal of zone of winds at 10 HP if the forecasts are correct as well. But you would look at that and think that will what, what reverse the zone of winds. So I'm not quite sure why that's not going to reverse. So we maybe because it's relatively um, short lived, it just starts sort of weakening after about 24 hours or so. Um, but anyway, it does look a very significant warming strategy from Russia into Siberia, displacing the polar vortex at its roots. The cold, the blue colours, which are the cold temperatures at 10 HP, they displace the polar vortex at its roots out into North America, North Atlantic, and into northern parts of Europe as well. In the extended range, um, we look like that. So another warming starts happening through the second week of January there over Russia, and again, pushing in towards the um, North Pole. That one was a little bit more toned down compared to the first warming, but um, all in all, keeping the polar vortex weaker than average, keeping it in its box there over the uh, North Atlantic. So uh, we should wait and see what, if any, impacts this has on the tropospheric level. But from a stratospheric perspective, <coughs> excuse me, what's more, things still looking 
quite interesting there, and we shall keep you updated. Central England temperature has gone up to 7 degrees, so it turns into exceptionally mild December. This is absolutely remarkable, really, considering how cold we was at the start of when we was like 5 degrees or more below average. We're now 2.5 degrees above average at 7.0. Um, so it has been an extraordinarily mild sort of uh, three weeks or so after that first week of the month. If it hadn't been for the first week, but maybe we'd be challenging 2015 for the warmest December on record. I'm not sure, but it has been a really, really mild run. I think that will probably tick down a little bit over the next day or two, but I'm less confident that we're not going to come in at 7 degrees. It doesn't seem to be coming down at all. It's just going up and up and up and up and up. So uh, that may that may stay at 7 degrees. Nothing, nothing surprises me these days when it comes to above average temperatures. <coughs> Excuse me once more. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. For the next couple of weeks, we're at London. Day red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for London. We're up and down um, into the new year, so we've got uh, cooler and also warmer sectors alternating. So, of course, that is a uh, very zonal, very zonal pattern as we're going into the um, new year. Averaging it all out, though, we, we come out warmer than average, of course. Further on through the first week of January into the second week of month, we have got a cooling trend, the GFS on solids today after shifting yesterday to a milder uh, trend today. The trend is, is towards colder. Again, you'll see that in the chart data in a moment. The thick green lines with GFS operational run. <coughs> Excuse me again. If only a map does become quite cold from the uh, first week into the second week of January. Again, how serious we take that, I'm not sure. There is a huge amount of scatter within there. We've got the lower on some of them up here. We've got the colder on some of them down there. So we just need to wait and see how this is going to work out and resolve itself. Precipitation-wise, the deluge goes on. More heavy rain to come over and into the new year. Maybe a bit of a drying trend there into the uh, second week of January. It's a long way out. Very extended rain, but we might be seeing a trend to something drier and colder. So take the second week of the month. Uh, snow road looks, looks like that. No snow up to at least sort of the 6th, 7th of January. But there are some so snow spikes appearing here <coughs> into the second week of January. So possibly uh, we might see uh, things becoming colder and maybe with the risk of some snow into the second week of month. Again, that's extended range and unreliable. Temperature anomaly is from the 29th of December to 7th of January, a little bit above average in the south, a little bit below average in the north. Northern Europe looking bitterly cold, Scandinavia, Nordic regions, and into northwestern Russia, very, very, very cold uh, through there, 8 10 degrees or more below average, but we remain on the mild side, really. And precipitation anomaly is from the 29th of December to 7th of January, average or slightly above average rainfall, especially so in more southern regions. Latest wind from that. From Earth North School dot net shows we're between low pressure areas today. So uh, there's one low going off towards Norway. More low pressures in the Atlantic that be bringing us wet and windy weather tomorrow. Today have got. <coughs> Should again once uh, more everybody. Oh, well, today we have got a brief little window of drier weather though. Right, let's start going through the chart data. Then, Mr. Malatis UK bet your run is looking for New Year's Day. It's a midnight New Year's Day. It's Big Ben's chiming, and uh, it looks unsettled. New Year's, same old weather. Low pressure still in control, so looking unsettled. More low pressure coming in through next week, bring, bring plenty of bouts of wind and rain in where that gets us to Friday, the 5th of January. Uh, the onslaught continues. The uh, ICAR bottle looks like that again, very unsettled for New Year's Day on into 2nd, 3rd of January. It's all low pressure, low pressure, low pressure, low pressure. Um, get to the end of next week, 5th of January, just raising the heights a little bit to a green and ice from starting to send some of these Areas of low pressure a bit further southwards. There. So a hint of something a bit colder getting to northern Scotland by the 5th of January. <clears throat> KMA, uh, again, looking very, very unsettled over and into the new year. Low pressure keeps on coming through next week with more rain to come. A little bit of a winter of dry weather at the end of next week, not for long. Low pressure back in. We get to the weekend 
of the 6th and 7th of January and on into the second week of the month, it starts to, uh, the United starts to run out of steam then. Higher pressure begins to ridge in from the door, so that start, turns drier and colder through the second week of January, um, with the low pressure being deflected further south and west of the country. Very cold air sitting over northern Europe, so if we could get wind into the northeast, we would start pulling bitterly cold air from the north. That's how the GFS midnight run is looking again. It's all low pressure uh, through uh, through next week. So low pressure, low pressure, low pressure. Um, heading up toward daytime, Saturday was sick to Saturday was seven. High pressure starts reaching in, breaking us out of the deluge. So we turn drier and colder on this area of high pressure. It's not a particularly cold pack, but it would deliver uh, frost and fog probably and, uh, and, and drier conditions as well. The high pressure then sticks around the country as we're heading towards the second week of uh, January, never really get the high pressure into a position to pull off anything particularly cold, and we end up going back into southwest seas. But GFS 6 then, again, with low pressure in the ascendancy through next week, plenty of rain to come. And then a bit of a change around days 8, 9, 10, as higher pressure builds, but this time more out to our northwest. So that that starts pulling something a little bit colder from the north and the northeast as we get through to uh, day 10. The high pressure sticks around the country, so drier and colder there into the second week of January with a, a return of frost and fog. Uh, again, the high pressure is never really managing to get into a position to pull off anything notably cold, but it's certainly a colder scenario for the GFS 6 there compared to the GFS midnight run. So all sorts of havoc and chopping and changing going on within the GFS model output at the moment. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for dear Matt. Why not drop a comment and to know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about that as well. Thank you so much everyone for dear Matt. We need to put on around 55 subscribers, that's all. Get ourselves to 17.6k. Uh, so if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and fans to subscribe and uh, you can all watch that as well as together. That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much everyone for dear Matt. Okay, GM, once more low pressure is in control for New Year's Day and the low pressure keeps on coming through next week, the onslaught goes on, but towards the end of next week, low pressure starts shifting southwards as a ridge builds in the Atlantic and some higher pressure tries to get going to uh, Scandinavia <coughs> and uh, that leads us into what looks like eventually a cold pattern by day 10, so it's the 8th of January, a block is beginning to form around Greenland ice and low pressure starts to shift eastwards and winds beginning to pull into to colder northerly, so the GM looks poised by day 10 to deliver proper cold conditions from the north. And then the ECM looks like that again, low pressure sticks around the country not only for New Year's Day but through most of next week. The low pressures keep on coming. However, right at the very end of the uh, ECM run, we get this significant low pushing through the country, bringing wet and windy weather, but also by day 10, turning us potentially uh, a lot colder. That's the 8th of January. High pressure is building around Iceland, but low pressure is diving southwards in towards the North Sea and the Low Countries, and we bring the wind into a cold uh, north easterly. We have a look at the upper air temperatures. You see we have got some very cold air lurking just to our north and northeast, seemingly ready and poised to push south east on the backside of this low. This is the precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from tometio.com. So more wet and windy weather coming in tomorrow. Turns to snow as it bumps into colder air in the north briefly, and then we'll go back to rain into New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. It very much is a showery scenario. More wet weather pushing through there. It's the second of January. Could be a little bit of snow across northern England on the northern edge of that low, but basically it's still just rain. We're looking at throughout next week. The deluge goes on, and then we need something a bit drier towards the end of next week. Not for long. More wet windies back in <laughs> for the weekend of the uh, sixth or seventh of January. Then we finish up then pulling in those northeast winds with showers starting to turn to snow by day ten. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day ten from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the eighth of January. 
24 members of the ECM are involved in cruise control and the operation run with a blocking area of high pressure in the North Atlantic towards Greenland. Low pressure is over the UK and West Europe. Winds coming in from a cold northeasterly direction by day 10. With that, we've got 14 with high pressure centered over slightly. The North Country, mostly dry, probably chilly, east winds or easy flow with frost and fog. <coughs> Excuse me again. And then we've got 13 with a ridge out in the Atlantic going up towards Greenland. No pressure towards our south and east. And that could well <coughs> be bringing a wind from a cold northeasterly direction. Most of the options looking chilly at the very least, I have to say, but if not cold at day 10. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 13th of January. 12 members of the ECM ensembles with a mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards Greenland and a trough of low pressure to our south and east. Again, that could well bring in cold north northeasterly winds we've got 10 again with high pressure in the atlantic going up towards greenland low pressures over scandinavia that could well bring down a cold north northwesterly flow um another 10 with high pressure more or less over the country that could deliver some frost and fog we've got eight with a large blocking area of high pressure towards greenland low pressures over france winds coming in from the northeast with that we've got six again mid-atlantic ridge Heading up towards Greenland, trough of low pressure over to the east coast winds again coming in from the northeast, so cold and wintry. And then we've got five with a mid Atlantic ridge, then towards Greenland, trough of low pressure over Scandinavia winds coming in from the northwest. All options to me look so it should be quite cold there um, from the ECM at day 10. Uh, finally, just have a very quick look at the uh, CFSV2, and this is how things look in terms of a 700 millibar height anomaly for January. We've got a mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards Greenland. Remember, it changed daily, but a mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards Greenland. Top of low pressure, east winds coming in from a cold northerly direction, potentially, with that. The temperature anomaly in January actually comes out about average, but uh, Northern Europe, Scandinavia, Nordic regions with cold winter goes on there. <coughs> Excuse me, again, cold and average condition. And uh, precipitation wise, we look like that. So, dear double for precipitation or no signal. But going back to the 700 millibar height, I see no reason why that wouldn't be a cold January, to be honest, with a mid Atlantic ridge there. Heading towards Greenland, low pressure to our east. That should get the wind in to the north northeast. Of course, at times there will be moderation with that pattern. At times you will get more of a westerly flow, which uh, would lift the temperature up um, a bit. So, so that's that's a reason why it's not forecasted cold up an average month. But anyway, it looks quite interesting for January there from CFS today. Remember that could look very different though tomorrow. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please, you like, share, subscribe. Make sure you share everyone on board, dear Matt. Why not drop a comment? Let us know <coughs> what you think about this and all about video. Don't forget to tell friends about gals. Well, it's great show everybody for dear Matt. As I say, 55 subscribers will get to 17.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that would be amazing. And as I said, we're going to be live at 6pm. We're going to do our last live stream of the year at 6. So we're not doing a pub run live tonight, but we are going to do... Uh, ten to we are going to do uh, ensemble watch. So we have a look at the twelves there. We we'll do ensemble watch, and we'll bring some long range on that live stream as well. So uh, I just want to get one last stream in. You know, I should really be resting, I think, but I just wanted to get one last stream in before the end of the year. So uh, tonight's the night. We're going to go for it. We're going to do it, and I shall see you at six pm. If you're around the channel, then um, I'll see you then. Just tell us coming up tomorrow, so we can have a six pm UK weather forecast. They'll be, but we get forecast on the 14 day. Not sure we'll do it EC 46 day. We might leave that off this week and bring it back um, next week. I'll see about that. But uh, definitely week ahead and uh, the 6 m forecast and also the 10 to 14 day tomorrow. You enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon. I'll see you a little bit later on, hopefully, for our live stream. And for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.